compiler directives and system will love. Compiler directive in any programming language is a way to pass instruction to the compiler so that you can make your code more reusable across different hierarchies and different files. Here is a list of all compiler directives in system will love. Out of which the one which are listed in the left hand side are quite commonly used across different SPNGs and the one in the right hand side are not commonly used. I am not going to explain these here but and uh, we will quickly see what, what will are the use cases of these compiler directives. So first one is tick include. It is used to include a file into a different file. So the general format would be either uh, tick include within uh, double quotes you can give the file name or within these set of symbols you can give, give the file name. And the next one would be tick define. So if you are familiar with uh, the def, uh, tick define functionalities in C, this is similar to that. You can define any set of functionality using tick define and the compiler will just replace that definition with its original definition whenever it is encountered. So for example, if you are defining um, a text like tick define, so this will be the macro here, DSP is the macro. You can optionally give arguments to the macro. If you wanted to give argument, you need to use a set of uh, brackets here. And if there is no bracket, uh, it won't take any argument. So in this case, this is taking two arguments. This micro uh, DSP is taking two arguments X and Y. And uh, this micro is saying initial dollar display um, start X, Y, N. So what happens is uh, after defining this micro DSP, if you use including this macro tick DSP somewhere in your code with a set to two uh, set of arguments, say for example, hello and world, those are the arguments passed to this macro. Then uh, when the compiler is expanding this macro, it will be equivalent to writing this set of code uh, with replacing these X and Y values with these two values. So it will be equivalent to writing initial dollar display start hello world and so the, it will be exactly uh, equal to the compiler will replace this macro uh, with this set of line of, line of code. So this is a use case of um, tick define. So another use case would be if you are defining say a word size as 8 using tick define you can uh, use that word size in uh, even in the size specification parameter uh, in an array like tick um, logic tick word size minus 1 down to 0 data so which, is, which will be equivalent to 8 minus 1 down to uh, 0 so it will be equivalent to 7 down to 0 of data. So after defining a lot of micros if you wanted to uh, undefine them or if you wanted to remove the definition you can use a tick undef all micro which will uh, undefine all the micros uh, which you have already encountered with this tick define. And the next set of compiler directives will be tick if def, uh, tick else, else if, end if and tick end if. So these are again conditional uh, compilation micros which might be uh, quite useful especially if you are sharing files across different units and so on. So we will see an example. Um, so assume that uh, you have a common file which is um, used across say two different units tb unit a and tb unit b and all your file uh, parts is exactly same but only a single line is changing across unit a and unit b so uh, in unit a you wanted to drive an interface uh, signal with say some value a a and in unit b say you wanted to drive the same signal with value b and uh, there will be a lot of code uh, in this in this file and, and you don't want to replicate this file into two different units. So in that case you can uh, you, you say uh, tick if def compiler directive so you can say tick if def tb unit a then uh, this will be your um, id value otherwise this will be your id value. So it doesn't have a, it doesn't have any significance to what is written over here so it is just equivalent to if this macro is defined then it will include it will compile all these things and if it is not defined it will compile all those things so even if you are making a compilation error a syntactic syntactical error in this part and if you are in, uh, defining this tb unit a using a tick define then it won't be cached in in the compilation so uh, tick define along with tick define you can use uh, the tick if def tick else tick l and if all those micros to selectively compile a set of uh, code in in a in a file so after defining um, this if def and tick else part 
you need to define tick define uh, tb unit a in the unit a file so that it will be included uh, the compilation will be uh, seeing this this part of the code and in the tb unit b you should not define this macro or you should uh, if it is already defined you should undef this macro next one is time scale so the time scale unit is uh, the time scale macro is used to specify the time unit and time precision in the current simulation time unit is a time of a, car, a single step in in the simulation so a single time step is a time unit and time precision is the precision value to which is uh, if every uh, time unit need to be rounded if there are a frag, there is a fraction time so we'll see an example assume we are defining it um, time scale uh, micro with uh, time unit as 10 nanosecond and time precision as 1 nanosecond so it means uh, the time values are multiples of 10 nanosecond and it uh, every time unit if it is a fractional time unit will be rounded to the nearest 1 nanosecond so let's see an example uh, if say in the test bench in an always block if you are um, changing the clock value after every 50 time unit so in the simulation you will see that every time unit is one uh, 10 nanoseconds therefore after every 50 into 10 equal to 500 nanosecond the clock value will be changing or uh, it will be toggling from 0 to one, 0 and 1 and your uh, clock period will be uh, 500 plus 500 equal to 1000 unit 1000 nanoseconds and the time precision comes to picture when there is a fraction in the time unit so for example say uh, in, consider this statement initial begin hash 1.55 uh, a is equal to 0 so after 1.55 time units a need to be assigned to 0 so to find the value of uh, the 1.55 uh, this will be this will be multiplied with the time um, time unit first so it will be equal to 15.5 time units so uh, as you know the time precision is 1 nanosecond so therefore it will be uh, adjusted to the nearest 1 nanosecond which will be equal to 16 nanosecond therefore this, uh, this this statement means after 16 nanosecond a will be equal to 0 and again after 16 nanosecond a will be equal to 1 with the, the time unit of 10 nanosecond and times precision of 1 nanosecond